So finally, we've made it to part three of making this little Corgi character in Blender. If you haven't already seen part one and two, go check them out on my channel. But um, essentially, we're gonna be finishing off now in this part and we'll be arriving at this cute little finished result here of this little Corgi character. Um, yeah, it's just been a ton of fun. So uh, let's jump right into, um, you know, part three and finish it off. But now we're gonna be um, just adding our particles and making a little scarf. So let's select our Corgi character. Let's go over to our particle properties. Let's click on plus to create a new system. And um, you don't have to name it anything, but we're gonna come here and just click on hair. And then you're gonna come here to the hair length and just drag it down, okay? So I'm gonna go with something, you know, let's go 0 0.09 should be fine. And then we're gonna go down to the children. We're gonna make it interpolated. And at the moment, these are looking really straight. So let's go over to our clumping or our roughness, actually. Let's go under to our roughness, that's right. And let's just make this 0 0.05 under roughness. And let's just take the end point value and drag that up to about 0 0.04. So we get a little bit of you know fluffiness to our corgi here. We're then going to go to the hair shape and we don't want this to look really thick. So we're gonna take the diameter root down to 0 0.03 or actually 0 0.3, 0 0.03 would be way too little. So just 0 0.3 would be okay. And um, let's go ahead and make sure to save as we're working. And let's just go Z and let's just look at this and rendered. Okay, that's looking good. Uh, we just don't want fur to be in certain places. So let's just quickly go to our object data properties, click plus to create a new group, tab into edit mode, and then all we have to do, and I know this might look tricky, but it's not. Um, we're just gonna come in here and let's just press I guess, okay, we'll do this. We're gonna hold in Shift and Alt and we have our face select option, Shift and Alt. We're gonna left click just in between two of these faces and it should do a nice loop selection, like so. And you're gonna go Control Plus to grow to selection till it's completely selected to the inside, like so. And then you're gonna go Control Minus just to shrink the selection till we only have the inside selected like so, maybe like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove that from the group. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Shift, Alt, left click to loop select, Control plus, and then Control minus a few times till we got it inside. And let's remove it from that group. So now if we deselect everything and we go over here and click on select. Okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. I never assigned everything to the group in the first place. Let's just press A to select everything. And with this new group, let's just click assign, okay? And I'm sorry for wasting your time, but now we have to do it again. Shift, Alt, left click, Control plus a few times, Control minus, and let's go ahead and remove it now. And let's grab this selection here, Control plus a few times, Control minus, still we only have the inside, and let's remove that. So now, if we click here on select, we should see this is the only place where the selection is. That's the only place we're gonna be having our hair particles. Okay, which is what we want. So let's go back into object mode. Let's go over to our particles and let's just scroll down now to our vertex groups and change the density to group. And now we have the proper placement. Okay, another thing we can do is just go to render, enable B spline. And let's quickly go to our particle edit. And this is optional, but I recommend, um, by the way, if you can't see the children particles, just make sure to go to your tools and just go down to the viewport display and enable children. But uh, what you can do over here is just do a little bit of light painting just to kind of add a little bit of direction to the fur. But honestly, I wouldn't overthink this bit. You could just leave it as it is. This is just extra little details you can do um, if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go with something like that. There we go. Just kind of paint his fluff a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna go back to object mode. Gonna go into my camera view and let's now make sure to save. Let's go render and just do a quick image render here, render image. And here we have it. We now have a nice fluffy corgi. How cute is that? Um, so um, the, it looks a little bit flat and I think that's just due to the poor lighting. Um, but really, you know, I think this is looking, you know, going the direction we want it to go. So that's pretty cute. So I'm gonna go ahead, close this render window and let's go down and add the scarf. So I'm gonna hide the stage. I'm gonna make sure I have the Corgi collection selected. Shift A, let's just go to our mesh options, add in a quick circle. G, Z, move it up to around the neck. 
tab into edit mode, go to your vertex select option, then go S to scale, E to extrude and Z, extrude down to about here. There we go, and then come in here, control R, roll your middle mouse button up to add in two segments and then double click and scale those two up on the Z and then just go Alt S and scale them out along the normals a little bit. Now enable your um, done um, proportional editing Come over to your tools up here, just enable the X mirror up here in the corner. And now we're just gonna grab this bottom vertex, go G, and using proportional editing, I'm just gonna do a little bit of adjustment. Might scale it like so. There we go, just making a rough looking scarf. And I'm gonna come in here, just kind of grab it over here and adjust it towards the neck like so. Then I'm gonna to go to the side view and I'm gonna do the same thing just bringing it in with proportional editing. Same over here. There we go, just bring it in like so. Might come in here, Control R, double click, Alt S, just scale out just a little bit. Give it a bit of thickness, and you could leave it at this if you wanted to. And I'm just gonna go Shift Alt, left click on this, and go V just to cut it. Right click to let go. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. In fact, with it still active here, this edge, I'm just gonna go double G just to slide it, but I have to turn off X mirror. But this is optional, you guys don't have to do this. So you can kind of bring one of them out a little bit. And like I said, this is just me being extra right now. So I'm not gonna do this too slow because I wanna not make the tutorial go too long, but you can kind of have the scarf kind of coming off here to the side, just extruding it a few times. You know, something like this. There we go. And then you just have to come here and slightly adjust it from the side. And then maybe tuck this one in around here like so, in on the back. Press A to select everything, go Alt N and just recalculate the outside normals. Something like that. And um, you know, wherever you feel it has to be closed in a little bit, just kind of use common sense and you know, you can tell where things need to be closer to the body and where they need to be further away. I think there's not much more I could say at this point. I think this is pretty easy to figure out as you're doing this tutorial. So just something like this. Um, just make sure it doesn't go too much into the body, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna tab back out. I'm gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. Then I'm gonna give it a subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna give it a material, I'm gonna go new and call it scarf. And I'm just gonna make the base color reddish color, like so. And then I'm gonna grab the scarf and optionally I'm gonna give it a particle system, make it hair, bring down the hair length, and I'll make it something like 200. And I'm just gonna go down to the children and make it interpolate it. And I'm just gonna go under to the roughness and just give it a little bit of an end, um, end point, like so. Okay, and I might make it a little bit shorter at the top, just like this. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure to save. And let's bring back our stage. And let's now go render and just do a test render. And there we have it. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this finished model to my Patreon. If you go and join the Patreon, you get access to a lot of these files. And it's also a way to support the channel and I really do appreciate it. So. Um, oh yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Check out some of my other content on my YouTube channel. It's all free and it's cool stuff that you can learn. So this has been Making a Corgi. If, um, yeah, I guess there's not much more I can say. I'll, I'll see you guys next time.